Hello, my name is Logan Simpson, and today with Kat and Dorothea, we're going to be talking to you about collaborative language recovery. I'd like to acknowledge the Aboriginal people of Australia who have lived here 80 or possibly 120,000 years now, it's believed. And look at the research by Ray Tobler, an Aboriginal geneticist who found that the mitochondria um, in Australia had split off into various regions so that there is particular mitochondria in the desert areas, in the tropics, in um, Riverina country. Groups had separated off and stayed separate for 45 to 50,000 years. So this explains the strong connection people have to, to country in that they lived in this area for a long period of time, didn't move out of that area and retained that knowledge in the community. But also the language that developed in these locations was developed around knowledge of that country, the particular ways of living there and the particular culture of human interactions that developed in that region. And this is why we wish to um, continue the language use in this country. My name is Dr. Kat Kutai and together we'll be presenting uh, documentation and um, collection work done with Wonkamaya through case studies and these were done in partnership with the Language Conservancy with um, Dorothea Hoffman and with myself as an academic focusing on implementing language support. I'll just start off with a brief introduction to the Language Centre and then some of the ways that we collaborate with other individuals and organizations. So I work as a linguist for Wangamaya Pilbara Aboriginal Language Centre, which is located in Port Hedland, Western Australia. The Language Centre was founded in 1987 and it focuses on producing resources in the 31 different Pilbara languages. Uh, many of these languages that we work with have less than 50 remaining speakers. Uh, we focus mostly on producing word lists, dictionaries, uh, sketch grammars, phrase books, body charts and children books, uh, and interactive dictionaries. Uh, and we also have an archive which is home to a collection of linguistic, cultural, and historical material, material from around the area. And now in trying to keep up with the 21st century, we're focusing on producing more digital and interactive material uh, like mobile language learning apps and eBooks. Uh, Wangamaya is quite a small organization, so we frequently seek the expertise of outside consultants, organizations, and universities to help us complete projects. So we've recently begun working with CAT to help us upgrade our archive catalog and to streamline the searching process between our archive and our server. And through this arrangement, we've been able to update everything. And we've also built new relationships with other specialists in this area to continue helping us. Um, we've also established an agreement with the University of Western Australia. Um, we've built an internship agreement with them where students will come up from the university and spend a few weeks with us. and. Uh, they'll spend a few weeks working with Aboriginal elders or a group of people and we sit down and uh, discuss a project that everyone can work on together. Uh, and with help from some UWA students, I've also been able to produce an interactive Pilbara place names map, um, which will hopefully be available on our website soon. and. We also work with uh, Dorothea at the Language Conservancy. And over the past year, we have uh, worked with Language Conservancy to apply for funding for rapid word collection workshops. And also we've produced with them a vocabulary building app uh, for the Narluma language, which has less than 50 full speakers. And we're going to continue to work with them to produce material in the other languages that we work with. 
My name is Dorothea Hoffman, and I am Linguistic Project Manager for the Language Conservancy, a nonprofit organization working in Australia, uh, the United States, and Canada. Uh, and I would like to talk to you a little bit about what we are doing with um, Wangamaya. Um, so since our founding in 2005, TLC has been a leader in providing support to schools, education departments, and indigenous tribes and communities working to restore their languages. TLC provides a number of award-winning materials and support to over 40 indigenous languages today around the world. Uh, we also we use technical assistance to grassroots level language preservation and education efforts and support survival of endangered languages. These are all the places where we work currently. So as you can see, there's a lot of uh, large and small projects all across the United States and Canada. And at the moment, we're working with two languages in Australia. In order to achieve our mission to help as many endangered languages as possible, the Language Conservancy helps Indigenous communities to build language activism through community and public outreach. We offer educational programming such as teacher training, immersion schools, um, develop language learning resources such as dictionaries, mobile apps, textbooks, children's books, audio learning series, teacher's guides and assessment testing. We also aim to uh, educate the general public about language loss and its adverse effects on indigenous populations. With Wangamaya, we started um, working in uh, April of 2020. So just this year, uh, and we developed a, uh, a vocab builder app for uh, for the Ngaluma language. Um, so for this vocab builder app, we developed over 69 new illustrations with indigenous artists uh, in consultation with Wangamaya, with Logan in particular, and with elders speaking the Wangamaya language. Um, as you can see here, this is our work process to um, develop images uh, from reference images that we were provided by Wangamaya. Uh, for specific Australia specific animals. In this case, these are all reptiles and all lots and lots of snakes. So we developed the app um, with uh, Logan as our main uh, consultant, uh, and he worked with Cherry, uh, Carrie Churnside, who um, recorded all the words uh, in the Vocab Builder app. It was 286 words and phrases, each um, with a recording. And we developed this vocab builder app in six months between April and October of 2020. This is what the, the vocab builder app looks like in the end. Um, so you can you can go through um, different categories and different words, um, learning them by first just listening to a word uh, and seeing the image with it, seeing also the the written version of it, uh, and then you have to go through and um, repeat the words by spelling or by figuring out what, what is what. Um, and um, you can actually download this vocab builder app um, for free. Just look for Ngaluma vocab builder in the app store and in the Google Play store, and you can uh, check it out for yourself. I originally came up to Northern Australia and West Australia and Northern Territory in the 1990s. I worked with Wonkamaya then mainly through my work as an engineer in communities, looking at appropriate technology and now what we call appropriating technology for communities, um, where obviously I lack the language to do that effectively. And I've now come back to work with Wonkamaya and appreciate that this ongoing relationship I have with that country and people has helped to build projects more effectively with, um, with the community and with the centre. So at university, obviously, one of our focuses is research. Um, this is around providing useful advice in terms of overall patterns and processes and overview of language use in the communities. Um, supporting access to suitable technology in context of these communities where stage they're at. And in our work with Fonka Maya, we have built relationships around these new projects and how I wanted to explain how these have developed. But also the work was particular particular one was a data update, date update with the Language Centre and um, how we assist that process 
and for particularly looking at the interoperability of materials and resources across not just language center but other organizations who had language repositories so the university we still have some freedom to represent the alternatives available we're not tied to a particular software system or approach and it is rapidly changing domain yet many people still don't have an understanding of the um, opportunities and, and the conflicts that arise in software development, why it takes so long. Now, large organisations like First Languages support and share expertise from community, commercial organisations and academic approaches and provide this overarching view. That within academic approaches, it's important that we can share across a longitudinal projects, knowledge and language learning techniques, technology to support this at various stages and integration of technology into community life so that the implementation of a project is as important really as the project. So in implementation, we're looking at all the players, university, external organisation, academics, considering how to make an event out of language learning that takes the focus away from this competency-based learning in language use and looks at community outcomes. And this is around seeing stories as the narrative of the community from its youth to now and into the future. So the stories share knowledge in language about the community, about how it works, its values, and the knowledge that it has about the land. So an example um, is of this is was in a reference, I can't remember who it was, talked about how the community narratives are like the narratives we have, our personal narratives of when we're young, we did this. And if we, well, the community also has narratives like, um, you know, we used to live on the continental shelf and when the waters rose, we moved into inland and the direct people gave us country to stay on until we got our land back, is the story of the sea level rising. And these stories are really important for a community to understand where it came from and how it's progressing through time. And But also the narratives are often based around survival aspects. David Nathan talks about when he was collecting words for water up in Grutland, he asked a woman for name and water and she gave her name. A community person who was assisting him explained, oh, that's the word for clean water. That's the clean water under the sea that when it's the drought, we can take a coconut husk and scoop it up and drink it. And that's obviously a, a, um, a, a, a spring that when, before the sea levels rose, that was obviously a water supply for the community. And even after the water, sea water rose, it could still be a water supply. So you can see that these stories are important for community survival, but they also have uh, importance as an identity survival. So we're looking at sharing language around events that are part of life for community, not a separate lesson, and how to integrate the technology into the community, implementing it in a way that is you know, appropriate for the culture and community activities. So the Work that we're doing with Franco Meyer is around the database that they're using for language, which now the system upgraded, so they needed a new version of it. And the data had to be um, converted to the new version, but also other organisations are um, storing data from the same region as Franco Meyer covers. So we want their databases to be um, interoperable with the Franco Meyer one even though they're not going to share the data, they could at least share, we have got this material. You know, so when you're looking up the database, you can see, okay, this is what Wonka Maya has, but also in this, hopefully soon, the other organizations will have theirs compatible and we can actually have a database of just the references to all the resources that are in the language. And as a university outside the language center and the politics that come from that, we can assist in that process. So there's, there's lots of access aspects that we can assist in. So to conclude, I wanted to say that we don't just bring in outside consultants for their projects. We engage with the local language groups to develop their own projects. And then we bring in outside expertise to help us complete these projects. Uh, so the Language Center really acts as a hub for collaboration between ourselves, the language groups and individual speakers, organizations and universities uh, 
it's a place where everyone can come together to work on projects and promote language use and recovery in the area. So here in the center, we have the resources to produce linguistic material like grammars and dictionaries, but it's important that we continue to collaborate with other organizations to make the material useful and accessible and engaging to the local community. So we develop sustainable relationships that don't just result in the finalization of a project, but we continue to work together. So we'll continue to focus on how to maintain these relationships, how to maintain and utilize systems that are already in place rather than uh, the constant creation of new ones. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed our talk. Thank you.